I'm Harris Walker. This is the Fox Report. Okay, guys, calm down. You probably saw John's hand in the air there. Our Fox News political insiders are here. John LeBoutlier is present and accounted for. Put your hand in the air like you just don't care. Former Republican congressman for New York. Pat Cadell in the middle of former pollster for President Jimmy Carter and Fox News contributor. And Doug Schoen, former pollster for President Bill Clinton and a Fox News contributor as well. By the way, Bill Clinton just a little while ago on the stump. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, yeah, he had a late-day event. Let's talk about this new polling. You've got one uh, set of polls looking at Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton, NBC News, Washington, uh, or Washington, uh, Wall Street Journal, and then you've also got the ABC News poll and the Washington Post showing similar things. Look at how that's tightening. So my question for all of you is, why now? Because that's usually what you see when you get close to the contest. Sure. Here's what's happening, Harris. We have the Democratic Party still divided. Hillary Clinton has Did had... Did you really think you'd ever have to say that at this point? No, I didn't. I never thought that we'd also be saying the Republican Party would be consolidating behind Donald Trump this early in the process. Because of that, and because of a sense that Hillary's the insider and Donald Trump is the outsider, this race is now effectively deadlocked. Some polls show Hillary ahead, others have Donald ahead, but this is all good news for Donald Trump. All right, Pat, I want to dig deeper in this and have you school us on something. So some of these reports are saying this is even the case when you have a D plus eight poll sample, which yes. is really critical for Hillary. Talk to us like we're six, because I don't okay, know what that Okay, well, means. here's the problem. The media polls are not very well done in many cases, as much as they get publicity for it. You have the Washington Post, which always has a huge Democratic edge. That's they have, a plus eight percent? That's plus eight Democrats, and yet they have Trump ahead among registered voters. Even though you have that big a percentage more Democratic That means that Trump's lead probably would be bigger, depending on the weight supplied. But they spend a lot of it talking about all adults, as though anyone it's irrelevant to us what she's doing with all adults or whatever. Registered voters are not even going to be as important, Doug, am I right? It's you likely voters. Right. And here's the thing. But, you know, there is a mindset, and you can look at it in the Washington Post poll, where they only asked questions about Trump. There were no questions about Hillary and the emails and the scandals or whatever. You could see that poll was designed to extract what they assume would be, I believe, many, many negative comments. And I guess it fits their Bob Woodward 20-person uh, task Team. force <laughs> to uh, uh, take care of Donald Trump. But it didn't work out in that poll. I found yeah, that one even more losing. significant that he was ahead. And look, his ratings, by, while bad, have caught up to hers. But look at, you know, we'll talk about this, but two weeks ago it was Hillary can't be beat. We were two weeks ago when we were on, oh, everyone says she's going to win, it's all over. Last week, oh my God, there are a few states that are not doing well. And this week, oh my God, she's collapsing. The movements here are like the campaign, erratic and major. Erratic and major. I'm writing that down. Donald all right. Trump's so, directions. as I come to you, John, uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, we started this hour with this news, is not saying that he's changing his position, because it got kind of nasty between him and Donald Trump and the little spat that they had publicly, but he's telling others, reportedly at a private event fundraiser, uh, to get behind Donald Trump. What does that communicate to you? He's afraid of his own, perhaps, re-election in South Carolina. He doesn't want to get on the wrong side of the whole party, which is at the moment coalescing behind Trump. The Much donors, faster than, faster than any of us could have thought. The donors, according to the New York Times today, they have a big piece, that the big donors are not yet there for Trump. But Trump's whole deal is not money. He doesn't need a lot of money. He, mm -hmm. His message, now, let me say this about these polls. I think they're a double-edged sword. They, they're bad for Hillary now, but in a way they're good for Hillary because they're, as they say in New York, slapping her upside the head and slapping any overconfidence out of that campaign. I they think now that's know. Gone, John. There is no overconfidence. Good. Well, that's right. good. And that's I think they described it as the Batan death march, one of the <laughs> eight. Yes, they oh did. Well, that's what her really. campaign is. All right. Like. And so on the other side, I'm not sure Trump, because he's doing so well in these polls, I'm not sure yet that he quite sees what's coming and what he needs to mm -hmm. do to be ready for it. He yeah. hasn't adjusted his message. We're going to talk well, tonight about there it. There is no argument that I've heard, uh, Doug, that's credible, yep. that looks at the situation with Bernie Sanders uh, and doesn't see an advantage for Donald Trump. A because you talk about the, uh, you're talking about the juggernaut, which is the Clinton team, right? And that getting going well, and how was, Donald supposedly. Trump may not know what it will look like. But Bernie Sanders is putting sand in the gears of that, well, of that machine right now. Let, let me speak to that, because as the 
prime proponent among the three of us of what the Clinton machine was allegedly and ostensibly going to do to Donald Trump, I have to have a bit of a mea culpa per your comment. She's not past Bernie Sanders. Bernie uh -huh. Sanders is going to be competitive, I believe, in California. He's made it pretty clear there's going to be a rules fight about the superdelegates, something Pat and John and I have talked about before. And he's also not going away quietly, especially when he's raising 25 to $30 million a month. Wow. And, and, and you know, Pat, when you talk about not going away pr uh, quietly, that's also a big problem because it's getting Hillary Clinton to focus on whatever he's talking about rather than what she would want to be talking about. I guess. I mean, I don't know I what her options are right she, now. She keeps go, trying to satisfy him going left. I'll meet with him, whatever. It's kind she's of a upset. dance. But here, here's the basic problem. Bernie Sanders believes, and he's right to believe this, if the Democratic Party had had the Republican rules, he would be the Democratic nominee. He might be the vice president. And he might, well, that may get him the but vice president. We we may get the vice so, the, so the fight that's going to take place, I said last week, over the issue of the future superdelegates and how the, mm -hmm. the system is designed is going to be all out war because I believe this, and, and I, I, my colleagues can, can comment, they, they may know better. I just think the established Democratic Party will not give up easily. Interesting. Well, you see what the supporters of Bernie are doing in California. They're trying to sue, or they are suing, to try to get a longer period of time for supporters to register right. for the next primary in California, June 7th.